One of the worst things that could ever happen to a portrait photographer is you have a great session. You and the model are vibing together. You've truly connected. You bring all your gear back home. You plug your memory card into your computer and voila, all the photos are out of focus. Or maybe even during your shoot, you were so confident you nailed your focus. You checked the back of your LCD, it looks good, or you knew that you nailed your focus when they were moving, but for some freaking reason, it just didn't work out. In this video, I'll be sharing real quick tips on how you can always nail sharp photos on any camera, whether it's film or digital. And if you watch this video all the way through and you wanna show off some of your work, you could do that down in the description below. You can join my Discord server and do just that. All right, so tip number one is something that I always practice in any situation. Situation, whether the subject is still or moving and that is to use the fastest shutter speed you can whether you're in the shade or in broad daylight or you have a flash on you having the fastest shutter speed possible eliminates a lot of shake that either you might create by holding the camera or your subject from moving around too much. A good rule of thumb as a minimum is that your shutter speed should be one over two times the focal length that you're using. So I'm using a 35 millimeter right now and one over two times 35 is one seventieth of a shutter speed. That should be my minimum, but I don't think that's even an option. So I think one over 80th would be my new minimum. But just because that's the minimum doesn't mean that you should stick to it. You should go as fast as possible without obviously compromising the exposure. The camera settings that you would change to allow yourself to shoot as fast as possible is by either opening up your aperture all the way up, whether it's to f2, f3.5, or f1.4. That'll allow so much light to enter your camera that cranking up that shutter speed will compensate for that and thus eliminating a lot of blurriness that could come from shaking. The second tip that I really want to emphasize is how you're focusing. A bad habit that I used to have is that I would focus on my subject's eye or my face and then I would compose and then kind of assume that the focus is going to be maintained when I move my camera around, which is definitely not the case. This is called recomposition. This is called focus recompositioning error because you have to understand that you can't just focus and then move your camera and recompose and assume that the focus is still gonna be fine because you nailed it the first time. Your plane of focus is actually moving and your subject is falling slightly out of focus depending on your lens. If you're shooting on a 100 millimeter lens or a 200 millimeter lens, the problem is exacerbated. You can't just focus and then be like, uh, move a little bit that's going to totally mess up your photo. For digital cameras nowadays, there's eye autofocus and continuous autofocus. So I highly recommend using those two settings. If you don't have eye autofocus, it's completely fine. Just use your spot autofocus, put the autofocus right on the person's eyes because that is the point of emphasis for most portraiture. Unless it's fashion, then you should focus more on the outfit or the body as a whole. But use continuous autofocus as much as possible because subjects do move back and forth just a little bit and you as a photographer move back and forth just a little bit if you're a film shooter man it's tough because we don't have autofocus most of the time so you might have to close up the aperture from f1.4 to maybe f2 unless you're very skilled very still and so is the subject the third thing that i want to emphasize is that you don't always have to shoot wide open and what do i mean by this all lenses whether they are big or small have aperture blades or f-stops when you lower your f-stop or open up your aperture all the way you get that nice blurred background that everybody loves in photography but you should know that lenses at the lowest f-stop or the biggest aperture actually don't perform the sharpest yes the biggest aperture does allow in the most light and it does give you the most blurred out background but if you stop it down just a little bit whether it's one third of a stop or a whole stop it actually gives you a much better performance and if you want to have that you know nice blurred background just tell your subject to walk away more from the background create more foreground background separation and then you'll get that nice blurred out bokeh that we all love last thing that i want to emphasize is knowing how to photograph a moving subject if you're on a digital camera you could probably crank up your shutter speed to 1 4000th or 1 8000th of a shutter speed and that really allows you a lot of flexibility to photograph something moving without having them look blurry in a photo but if they're moving you could tell them to move at half speed because if you're taking a photo nobody really knows how fast something is moving so it eliminates a lot of you shaking your camera and for them moving too fast that you might either miss focus or they actually do turn up blurry if you're a film photographer or you don't have fast shutter speed available to you depending on the light setting or whatever 
use flash, use a strobe, use a constant light, use anything to help bring in more light so you can use more shutter speed. But with a flash, you actually freeze a moving subject no matter how fast they're moving. And it's pretty cool, but there's more videos on that. I'll link some videos up here, but that is the last thing that I want to emphasize. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys liked it and found it helpful. If you want to show off some of your work from watching this video, you can join the Discord down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.